What if you were able to have all that information that was on your computer just straight into your brain? Why would I have a computer in my brain when I can have it on my desk? <laughs> <laughs> no! As the world continues to evolve at an alarming pace, the lines are blurring between what is tech and what is human. We spoke to two leading experts about the limitless potential of human augmentation. My name is Matthew Liao. I'm the director of the NYU Center for Biotics. My name is Vivian Ming. I'm a mad scientist. And then shared their opinions with three families to discuss how it might impact their lives and what it might mean for future generations. Cats can see just as well as we can during the day, but they can see seven times better than we can at night. And the reason they can do this is genetics, right? They have the genetics for night vision. So if there's a way to augment ourselves, to give ourselves night vision, where we can see just as well during the day, but we can see seven times better at night, imagine the global energy consumption, how much we can reduce that. Well, he had me at cats, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I can't even lie, I was like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> that was really interesting. So yeah. the idea of augmenting our eyesight to see better would be you know, a lot more eco-friendly because we would reduce the amount of our light lead needed at night time. That's cool. I think that's, that's a good use of augmentation. I would never change anything in my body that would resemble or have a trait of a cat because I can't stand you it. Yeah. I would, I'd do it. I would be a guinea pig for it, I think. I would like to try it. I'm having my eyesight done, I'm having my hearing done, I'm having my brain tampered with. I want to be the best human being out there. Would you want to save your, change your eyes to save the planet? I want to save the planet, but I don't know about my eyes. <laughs> Is it more? I've got to think about my eyes. The block test challenges your working memory. It shows you these sequences, these patterns of light and sound. Some people can only do shorter sequences. Some can do much longer. Typically, on average, people come out around five, six, seven plane sequences. What happens if we don't augment people in working memory from being a seven to an eight, but instead we augment them from being a seven to a 20? There are no 20s. Those people don't exist. We don't really know what that would be like. I don't understand why That's, they feel it's they your memory. I it's your memory capacity that it's talking about. But I don't understand why they need feel they think there's a need to have a twenty. What would you do with it though? Uh, you know. I'd use it to reset my exams to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> your sister yeah. and her friends, many yeah. of her friends who've all got special needs, are not able to even live an independent life. Yeah. They need assistance with a lot of yeah. things. And they make them able to get a, a job that would help them have a oh, just relatively have slight, normal life. Slightly style. more independent yeah. way of living. Yeah. But don't you think you will alienate yourself with your friends and your family? You will feel, think differently about people and behave and react differently to everyone. Yeah. So then you're alienating yourself and you'll be a loner. Smart loner though. Is, is that yeah. good? No. Well. <laughs> no. <laughs> Perhaps one of the biggest fears people have about the idea of implanting a computer in the brain is that their brain might get hacked. And that's a pretty legitimate fear. But let's be clear, it's not hacked in a way a computer can be hacked. So someone might influence your brain, but what if they could subtly influence your perception of an event, uh, or even at a more basic level, your enjoyment of an experience? Oh. How many governments would love to be in control yeah. of your feeling of whether they're doing a good job or not? No way! Oh, that makes me feel gross. <laughs> well, I think it's a shocking idea. They could make you do stuff that you don't want to do. It's like rob a bank or something. Have you been watching too many science fiction films? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's like me saying to you, I've, uh, I've infiltrated your, throat, your thoughts, so you like mushrooms now. Don't do that. What if you were able to have all that information that was on your computer just straight into your brain, like without having to have... Why would I have a computer in my brain when I can have it on my desk? <laughs> <laughs> no! The challenge is to somehow augment ourselves, but in a way that we preserve our humanness. 
And so what it comes down to is, what are some of the crucial features of humanity that we want to preserve? I think empathy is something that's quite important to preserve. I don't like to take away people's personalities. People and humanity making mistakes is what makes us people. If you could preserve empathy and sympathy, I think that's something that I would definitely think is sort of like human. I think the, the future is going to be absolutely brilliant. I had a, a big mobile phone when they first came out. It was like a brick. Everyone's got one now. So mm. just think of the next step going forward. I think it's going to be amazing. What's next after that? I can't wait. Mm. Really can't wait. I think for your generation and the generations after that, it's going to be fantastic.